Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy. In this video is a short demonstration on checking assumptions for repeated measures ANOVA in our studio. The assumptions that will be looked at will be normality of subgroups, homogeneity of variances, and sphericity. To give a small bit of context to what we're going to look at, I'll just look uh, first just talk us through a small uh, sort of the sample data. So previously on YouTube, YouTube, I would have uploaded a set of videos on a sample of data manipulation techniques in our studio. And the fifth video, the fifth of five, would have been about introducing the using dplyr and tidyr packages to filter and convert data from wide to long format and vice versa. Um, here's the link to the YouTube video. And from this YouTube video, we would have actually derived or kind of ended up with this, this data set. So that's the one that we're actually going to just look at for the purposes of doing a repeated measures ANOVA, or more so for the purposes of checking the assumptions for repeated measures ANOVA in this video. So what we'd have here is we have 16 participants over five time points. We're looking at their triglyceride levels, and the triglyceride levels are measured in uh, milligrams per deciliter. And we're interested in whether or not there is a difference in triglyceride levels over the course of the five time points with respect to gender. There are seven females and nine males for this sample data. And, and I suppose it's just worth uh, highlighting that the measurements that we see here are just randomly assigned. Okay. Now, what would be important if we plan on doing a repeated measures ANOVA is we have to see do, whether or not we satisfy or violate the assumptions. So the first assumption that we'd have would be normality. So the fact that we have five time points and we have two ty gender types, then that means we have 10 subgroups. So we need to look to determine do we at least satisfy the majority of the subgroups when it comes to normality. Um, the next thing then we'd have to look at would be Levine's uh, sorry, not Levine's test, but homogeneity of variance. Now, when you look at homogeneity of variance, if you were to apply Levine's test, which is nearly like the go-to place for homogeneity of variance, what Levine's test would do is it would tell you whether or not there's homogeneity of variance at baseline with respect to male, for males and females. Is there homogeneity of variance at, after one month with respect to males and females after two months and so on like that. So if you were to apply Levine's test correctly, what you'd end up with would be five results from Levine's test. And that's really not what we're interested in. Although that would be of interest, that's not the main thing we're interested in. The main thing when it comes to homogeneity of variance is in the overall 10 subgroups. Okay, So the test that we would look at applying here would be Box's test. The third thing that we're going to look at then will be sphericity. So because of the, the within subjects effect, so time being the within subjects effect, we'd have to look at whether or not there's a difference in the variances of the differences. And that's what sphericity is. And the test that we'd have in that case would be Malachy's test of sphericity. And that would be our final assumption. And then that leads us into the, either being confident to doing a repeated measures and over, or maybe looking at kind of some, I suppose, data transformation, or would we have to do some kind of variation of a non-parametric test or so on like that, OK? Now, for the purposes of this video, it's mainly just to show you, I suppose, the script. So I suppose check these assumptions, whether or not uh, the assumptions are met or whether or not they're violated. And then the fourth point to this part of the video would be just looking at presenting the results. I'd often feel that it's an important aspect to it, like our studio is brilliant at giving the results. It's just how do you maybe kind of present the results in a table? And I just want to maybe give a suggestion to doing that. Now, I suppose what's important to highlight when, is, when it comes to presenting the results, it all depends on where you actually are or what, how you plan on, I suppose, what purpose. Like when it comes to, a, I suppose, a journal paper, I generally would not be, myself, would not be presenting results on assumptions in the journal paper. I would generally say in the journal paper in my method section that I checked for normality, homogeneity, of variance, and sphericity. And it would say then whether or not the measurements satisfied or violated these uh, assumptions, and then would proceed on to the main results. And I would feel that generally that's enough. And if, uh, I suppose, an editor or if a reviewer actually wanted to actually see the statistics to back up those assumptions, that, that's no problem whatsoever. I'd actually have the script for that, or I can send on a table of all the results, whatever the case would be. But generally, I suppose, for um, a paper, I would just state uh, the assumptions that were checked. But then for a thesis, 
I would uh, probably look at it a bit differently. So for a thesis, I don't think there's any harm in stating the assumptions, stating the results of your assumptions. I wouldn't necessarily put it in the main body, and this is me personally, okay, and I, I know that people would have their own kind of views on this, and I'm more than happy if people have a view that they might want to throw it into the comment below. I think I think there's always learning from these videos uh, for, for me, myself, and for people actually listening and so on. But I suppose when it comes to a thesis, so I would generally find that checking for the assumptions is extremely important. There's no doubt about it. Um, presenting the results of your assumptions in the main body of your thesis, I feel personally that that would take away from the results that you might have following up, the results that you might have following up with your ANOVA or your pairwise comparisons. So I generally wouldn't be presenting my results for assumptions in the main body of the thesis, but I would look to present, the, I suppose, these state them in an appendix. So if I was to state them in an appendix, then I'd like to kind of state them in a nice manner. I'm not a fan of, I suppose, typing up results, um, as in, you know, taking the results out of our studio, copying and pasting them into an Excel file, because I just feel, look, that that's, if I'm copying and pasting or if I'm typing them myself, there's no kind of, I suppose, track record of doing that. I, I'd be a big advocate of anything that I try to do, that there would be a transparency and that there, there would be a track record for it. And that's ultimately what our studio is brilliant for. So what I'm just finishing up with here for it, the, I suppose, in the fourth part for this video is how to present the results and more so how to, I suppose, generate script that can present the results. So I'm just going to put up what kind of the end game is here. Because I often feel that that can be, can be useful to have to kind of know what you're kind of working towards, and especially at the start when you're trying to get your head around something, and then you can kind of say, look, I'll work towards that, and then when you kind of get to that point, you can then say, look, do you need all that information then or not? Okay, so this is just a sample idea. Okay, a sample, uh, I suppose, output is what I have titled the Excel file uh, to kind of maybe just kind of I suppose a bit of focus to the video to what we're actually trying to achieve. Now, for this video, it's it's, I suppose it's twofold. One is to, I suppose, show you the script that can be used to check, uh, I suppose, to check these assumptions, the assumptions for normality, homogeneity, variance, and sphericity. And the second part, part to this video is just more how to present them. So the purpose of this video is not to necessarily talk about p-values or talk about the null and alternative hypotheses or anything like that. Okay, it's just more down to what script could you use and how would you present the results. So when it comes to normality. Um, for me, I would feel that um, there's kind of three things I would check for first when it comes to normality. I would first look at looking at a, a graph. Often the graph that you'd use would be a, his, a histogram. But the fact that we have 10 subgroups here, I think that look maybe a box plot might be a better graph to kind of give an idea to whether or not there's an issue with skewness in the data. Then the second thing I would check for would be is the mean roughly equal to the median. And then the third thing then would be skewness. Is the skewness between minus one and one? And those three parts together would give me an idea to whether or not I have an issue with my data. And sometimes they'll all be in line with each other, that they'll all be in agreement. I could be ticking all three of them, or sometimes they could be in conflict, that sometimes a test might be of benefit. Now, that would, this would really depend on what type of sample size you'd have to whether or not a test will be helpful or not. Okay, so that if for the purpose of this video, and you can see here that the sample sizes we have, we have seven females and we have nine males, that the test that's going to be applied here would be the superior weight test. Okay, and for this, since we have 10 subgroups, the, we, there is no requirement that all 10 subgroups have to be normally distributed, so you have to check the normality of each of the subgroups. So you can just see here that I'm just stating, look, that they are normally distributed, and I'm using the p-values to back them up. I just feel that this is kind of a useful way of presenting the results. Again, this would be more of an appendix kind of idea as opposed to a main body uh, thesis, or definitely not in the paper. Then you can see there on the eight row here in the Excel file, equal variance is assumed. So this is kind of the idea of a homogeneity of variance. So the test here would be boxes test. So this is looking at the homogeneity of variance at all 10 subgroups. So do, do we satisfy that condition of homogeneity of variance? We do, and then this is the p-value to back that up. And then sphericity. So sphericity is where you're looking at whether or not there's a difference in the variances of the differences. Uh, the test that you'd use here would be Milwaukee's test of sphericity. And in this case here, the result is, yes, sphericity is assumed. And then there's the p-value to back it up. And um, 
I suppose what I want to kind of show you for the fourth part then is how do we have scripts that can generate a table like this? Now, it's never going to generate it perfectly. I'm just only going to show you kind of two options to kind of getting a table like this. There's always going to be a small bit of manipulation of a table in Excel as in a bit of formatting, you know, merging columns and stuff like that. But what I'd like kind of highlight here is I don't type in any of the values that you see here. All these values, all these yeses and nos and brackets, they all come from the R script. They're all generated from the R script. Okay, so let's go to start working on the R scripts though. Okay, so here we have, so in my previous videos, you'd have, you would have seen me that I generally would be typing up the R script for the purposes of the, of the videos, but since we're kind of getting into more kind of, I suppose, interesting, not necessarily interesting, but kind of a small bit more complex uh, statistics, it nearly has to be uh, pre-prepared, I suppose, basically. Okay, so the first thing we'd have to look at will be the packages that would be required for the purposes of this video. So there's a couple here, nothing ma uh, major, so nothing really out uh, massively new I suppose so you'd have your read Excel for importing the data from Excel ggplot then will be used for uh, the box plot that we're going to look at to, to determine whether to give us an idea to whether or not the data is normally distributed whether or not there's potential skewness in the data and so on uh, dplyr will be used for I suppose generating the mean median skewness in one kind of table okay so I'm going to look at you looking kind of at the summary statistics there for that psych package is going to be needed for the skewness function Bio tools will be needed for boxes tests. So when you're looking at doing the um, homogeneity variance, we're going to be looking at boxes tests. We need bio tools for that. The one thing when you want to use the bio tools function, or sorry, the package, uh, the function within it would be boxes test function. Uh, the data needs to actually to be in a wide format. Okay, so you can see here from the Excel file that we actually what we have here is the data in a long format, and that's ultimately predominantly like what we need to, I suppose, for a lot of the functions that we want to apply. But if we were looking at the bio tools function, we actually need the data to be in a, a wide format for that. Okay, so where I'm actually going back to your script, so we need the data to be in a wide format. So that's why we need the tidy or package. Then the EZ is for running off an EZ ANOVA, which is the repeated measures ANOVA. The reason for running off that, even though I'm not interested in the actual the p-values that we obtain from that, with regard, I suppose, ultimately, there's three hypotheses when we're doing this uh, um, uh, ANOVA, but it's more that it's Malachy's test of is what we're interested in, and you can get that from the EZ ANOVA uh, function. And then finally is how, to, uh, I suppose, writing the data, writing the results to Excel. So we're going to look at this X. LSX package. Okay, so there's a few bit, bits there. Um, like always, so you can see underneath it for the description of this video that there's a link to Google Drive, and it, within the, on that link, then you'll see that there's going to be a syntax file which will have all the, um, oh, sorry, not a syntax file, there'll be a word, uh, text file which will have all the scripts that you can see here for, uh, for the video. Okay, so we're just going to run this first. So it's installing all those packages nicely. That's fine. So bio tools you see often can just take a small bit of time and everything else seems to be kind of okay there, seems to be working there fine. Okay, so the first thing then so would be just to import the data. So the importing the data, I'm going to import it and call it long. So that's that bit done. Okay, so this is the data that we have that you can see there in the Excel file. Then the next bit then that would be just important would be just I suppose stating the variables that are going to be factors. So we have a between subjects factor, which is gender. We have a within subjects factor, which is the time with the five time points. And then we're going to have our participant ID will need to be stated as a factor. Now, technically, you don't have to. You can get away with not doing it. But it just comes up with a warning sign when we run off these at ANOVA later on that oh, what your patient or your participant or your subject ID should be stated as a factor. Okay, so I'm just going to first do that here. So nothing majorly new there, but it's just an important step to have to check for. And then the next thing then is to do the normality. Okay, so we're going to, so this is going to be what we're focusing on now here is our first assumption, which will be the normality of the 10 subgroups. I would always feel before jumping straight into actually doing a test, we should have a picture in our mind to what we actually have. So I would like, what I like doing anyway would be um, the box plot. Okay, so you can see here, I, I'm going to run it off all in one go for just the purposes of the video here. But you can see here, I'm first looking at running off the box plot. I generally run it off nearly as default because this gives me an idea to how I want to scale my axes and so on and how I might like, label, like to label them. So I'm just, and I'm going to, uh, so I do generally do it in two steps. Okay, so I do that here and we get this box plot. So this is just to kind of give us an idea to whether we have an issue with our data. I always feel it's nice to have an idea to what the results of tests would be. So, you know, so I'm not nearly caught off guard when I'm actually running off the test, okay? So here, what we can see then is 
for this one here, we can see, look, that generally there doesn't seem to be any major issues with the data. None of them, like there's a couple of outliers in the first one here, but there's nothing, ma I know you can say there's a bit of skewness here on this one. So who are they? This is the males at the third month, the males at the first month, a small bit of skewness, but nothing outlandish. I think we should generally be okay for normality here, but let's go off and do our statistics to determine it, okay? So this, uh, the statistics then for this, what I find useful will be looking at the mean, median, to see are they roughly the same. Now what roughly the same is really dependent on the type of data you have. Here what we're looking at are triglyceride levels and they're measured in milligrams per deciliter. Then there's going to be the skewness. Uh, so the skewness, ideally you like it to be between minus one and one. As a guideline, you can always handle it sometimes when it's slightly outside of that, but as a guideline between minus one and one. And then we're looking at going to look at the Shapiro will test. Okay, so um, we're going to look at working off a 5% level of significance. So if our p-value is greater than 5%, then that means we can fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is what we're saying here. Then in this case, look that the data is normally distributed, keeping it in the nice, simplest terms as possible. Okay, so you can just see here, down here, I'm looking at running off the Shapiro will test and then creating another line that if the result for the Shapiro width test is greater than 0 0.05, say the data is normally distributed, and if it's less than 0 0.05 or less than or equal to 0 0.05, you say it's not normally distributed. Find that this is just a nice way of doing it, um, and then I'm just when it comes to the output, the output will be in a wide format, so I just want to make it in a long format, so I just end up transposing it and end up with something like this. Okay, so I'll just make this a bit bigger just so we can see it here. And so what we can see here is we have the females baseline. There's seven females. Here's the mean, there's the median, there's the skewness, and this is telling us whether or not it's normally distributed. And then that's across all our 10 subgroups. So we can see across all the 10 subgroups, if we scan through the descriptive statistics and look at our tests, we can see that they're all normally distributed, which is a nice thing then. Now, so now we can have that aspect done, and so now we can move on to the next part. Okay. And again, for the purpose of this video, it's more just how do we do the checks as opposed to actually, I suppose, spending time talking about, look, what does it really mean to say your data is normally distributed? What do you do if your data is not normally distributed and so on like that? Like, that's not the purpose of this video, but I'm more than happy to do other videos that might will focus on those if there's interest there. So by all means, put something into the comments there. Um, you might, this is just one approach that I find useful. You might have another approach yourself. And I really think that, especially with the, I suppose, the R community, there's, there's great, um, sharing of information in it so and this is just one mode of uh, sharing information and i'm very happy to um, i suppose read other people's comments and to share them on, on this youtube channel if need be okay so look i think here i think is a good enough par point to just part maybe just stop it at the moment so what we've just looked at here i suppose is explaining the data that we have explaining the assumptions we're going to look at and we've just focused on checking for the normality and provided the script for checking for the normality the next part we're going to look at then will be looking at the homogeneity variance sphericity and how to present the results okay so look like always on youtube it's great if you like share subscribe to this channel it's uh, it's very good for i suppose to keep the momentum going for the channel and hopefully you're finding the information in this video of use and you might come back then to the for the second part where we look at the remaining assumptions